Hi, this is Erica Drobo, and today we're going to talk about protection levels in a storage array. So with a traditional storage array, it uses RAID uh, to aggregate drives and give them a level of protection if you so choose. So the first thing you have to learn is what RAID level do you want? You want to use RAID 0, which gives you, which stripes uh, across all the drives and gives you high capacity but doesn't give you protection. Do you want to use RAID 1, which mirrors the drives, uh, so you have very high performance but you have reduced capacity? Do you want to use RAID 5, so you have a stripe like RAID 0, but you have a parity drive to protect you from drive failure, or RAID 6, where you have two parity drives to protect, and so on, right? There's a, there's a lot of different options you have to choose from, but you have to learn that up front so you make the right decision. Now, if you don't make the right decision, let's say I have five drives here and I create a, a RAID 5 group, which will then use one of the drives for parity data, so I have the capacity of, of four drives. If I then want to, let's say, change to RAID 6, it's not just as simple as changing the configuration and the array takes care of the rest. Some arrays allow you to go through a RAID migration process, but that would involve a lot of downtime or at least you know, heavily reduced performance. So in a traditional array, most often what you do is just take all your data off, reconfigure the, the, the stripe so it's, let's say, RAID 6 instead of RAID 5, put all your data back on and, and, you're, and you're back up and running again. So very complex and challenging. Now also, if you want this RAID group to automatically be able to repair itself without any user interaction, you have to add a thing called a hot spare. So you have to add a drive, it's the same size as the other drives, and it's not utilized, it's just sitting there on standby waiting for a drive in this, in this pool, in this RAID group, uh, to fail. And then if a drive fails, it will automatically then rebuild itself using, using the hot spare. So it's, it's not fully automated and also it utilizes valuable capacity in your array. In a Drobo, it works a little bit differently. So first off, in a Drobo, you don't have to know anything about RAID levels. All you have to do is make one decision, which is, do I want to protect myself from a single drive failure or two simultaneous drive failures? And you can make that decision up front or even after the fact. So let's say in a Drobo, you start with single disk uh, redundancy, and it will use one drive for protection. And let's say you have enough available capacity to change to dual disk redundancy. It's a simple check of a box in the management software, and it will then utilize a second drive uh, for protection. And now you're in a dual disk redundant mode. Also, there's no need to put a hot spare in a drobo because it also utilizes that free capacity for the hot spare. We call it a virtual hot spare. So if a drive fails in a drobo, it will go through a rebuild and, and in the back of the faceplate is the user manual essentially of a drobo and the lights will blink green and yellow which equal it's rebuilding itself. And then when it's done, the array will go back to a solid green state so it'll be totally healthy and then your failed drive will just have a blinking red light meaning at your convenience replace it with a good drive and when you replace it with a good drive the overall capacity in the array, array will go up to its previous state. So in a Drobo it's just that easy.